<laughs> so first of all, yeah, huge congratulations. Thank you. Lincoln, Lincoln lad, worked around the world. How does it feel to be heading up the top women's team in Lincoln Chanel? Yeah, it, it, it feels good. And, uh, you know, it's um, it's kind of come around full circle because obviously this is where I was growing up and I went to school in Lincoln. Um, I left quite a few years ago uh, for my career. And if you asked me 10 years ago, would I see myself back? And um, the answer would probably be no, because I, I fancy doing a lot more traveling and things. Uh, but my family's here at the end of the day. And I find you always come back to your roots and your family. And I think since coming back, you appreciate the city a lot more, the changes that's been made. And then football is something I've been involved in all my life. So I think the chance to, to get involved in the women's game at a club like Lincoln that I used to go watch as a kid and everything is a, is a fantastic opportunity. You've been with the club for about a year already. So, you know, the players, the other staff, that's going to be a, a, an advantage, surely. Yeah, I mean, it's great from that viewpoint because you do know the players. You work closely with them week in, week out. Um, so the talent, not just in the first team, but the development girls and the, the youngsters that are coming through, it's quite exciting. And that's what made, from my point of view, an easy decision with that. And then the staff we have on board that was already put together is great experience, staff, enthusiastic. Um, and the board just matches all that that's going on the pitch, off the pitch. So it was a great, a great thing to, to come to, to do, really. We can't ignore the fact that, you know, we're now into two seasons that have been hugely disrupted lots of disappointment for everybody. So where is that leaving the, the players and coaching staff and yourself at the moment? How are things? I think more than anything, it's the uncertainty. Um, you know, we went through it last year. Um, you would hope you'd be better prepared for it this season, um, but it's not the case. So really, it's, it's just the not knowing. And at the end of the day, players just want to play. Coaches just want to coach. People just be want to be back on the field. And so that's the, the crux of it all, really. When it's safe to do so, we just want to carry on. We just want to get back to doing the, the game we love, whether it's coaching or playing or spectating with. So it's just what, what is it going to, which direction is it going to go now? What, what can we plan for? What can we do? And when can we get back on the grass doing what we love the most, you know, in that that's safe for everybody, really. So I think everybody's missing it in one form or another. Um, and I think we're just all waiting anxiously to see what the outcome is so we can move forward. So I'm guessing, you know, whatever the outcome of, the, of this season and, and the league, etc., the focus has to be on kind of the, the what next. So you have the reins now. Yeah. What's your vision? What's your ambition for, for Lincoln City women as we look sort of through the summer and into next season, potentially? Uh excitement really uh, and the journey we're, we're going to continue there's already a great foundation set and the work that was done already and that's been put in place and I think that's what makes it easy because the enthusiasm uh, and the direction we're heading in as a club is one of excitement lots of things going on behind the scenes lots of great ideas and a real vision for the future uh, and I'm just happy to be part of that and play my role in that and I know the players um, they'll give everything they can towards that. So, you know, we're ambitious. We set our goals. More importantly, how we're going to achieve them. And in the background, while we've been, uh, you know, sat at home with things, plenty of downtime at times, I think we've been planning already how we're going to do what we're going to do. Regardless of what happens at the end of the season, we have to start planning for the next one as well. Um, and we're already putting things in place, ready to go when the time's right. And just looking a bit more broadly about Lincoln City, do you get the sense that Lincoln City women are, are becoming more part of the Lincoln City family, the brand, the, the kind of whole picture? Yeah, definitely. I mean, even as an assistant, I know we've had lots of conversations at various levels with the club, um, how to move forward already, um, how we can get more involved from a community level to, to involved in, in Lincoln City as a club as a whole. So, it's not, I think a lot of the times when you're involved in the women's game, you, you often carry the name of the club, but actually behind the scenes, how much is it a part of the club? So, you know, they play at different venues, they have no links or anything like that. And that's sometimes what's gone on in the past in my experience. And you're just carrying a name. 
I don't feel this is the case moving forward. There's been some positive dialogue. There's some direct links into the club. And I think that's what's exciting, really, that it's one a club as one being supported from all, all areas, really, which is, which is great. And, you know, the, the women will really appreciate that as well. So talking more broadly about the women's game, then, there's been huge strides forward in the last couple of years here in, here in the UK uh, with, you know, sponsorship deals, TV coverage. So what's, what's your kind of perception of that? Do you, how do you feel about that? I think it's fantastic, to, to be honest. When I left this country uh, many years ago, and obviously the, the first one I go to is the States, it was a cultural change in terms of the women. And I saw how far behind we really were, um, not just in, in performance and talent, but overall as a country accepting the women's game. So to come back and then to see the changes uh, over the past few years, um, not just in terms of, yes, the things you see on the TV and at the highest levels with the national game and the highest levels of the leagues and so on, but all the leagues and tiers below that. And it's the youngsters, really, the future of our country and our game, the, the amount of time and effort that's been put in into that, trying to get more women involved in the coaching structures. So it's the holistic approach from the youth to the coaching and education to creating more jobs, um, and then overall, that has a big impact on more women coming into the game, whether it's as a player or whether it's working within the game or whatever it may be in coaching. It's, it's a great push in the right direction. And as you can see, the FA is really trying to push that as well, which th that's what it's all about for me, really, is what, where are we at now? But how much further can we go with it? Because it is an exciting time for sure. So there are lots of positives. There's also uh, still some negative hurdles and barriers to get across in terms of the sexism and even misogyny towards women connected to the game that we all love, whether that's as a player, a commentator, a coach. How do you feel? How, how can we get over? How can we challenge that? Yeah, it, it's tough because I think the, the feeling I get personally is, it's ingrained as, as, a, as a, a society, ultimately. So we've been brought up with football. It's been around for many years. We, we designed the game. It was designed by men, and men have always played the game. But you know what? Things are changing, and times are changing. And the women are every bit as athletic as the men. The quality of the football is, is comparable. Even at youth level, the talent is coming through. So the only way to change that is to keep doing what we're doing. We need to... We need more media coverage, more interventions where we're getting more and more involved with that, letting people know, showcasing what we can do, social media, uh, role models, and even teams like ourselves, you know, at the level we're at within the national level, getting involved in community. If we can change the mindset of our own community within Lincolnshire, then, you know, everybody has that impact. It just grows and grows. So I think we have a duty of responsibility. Yes, we shouldn't have to work that hard, but we do. It's just how it is. So we will. We'll work hard. We'll be out on social media. We'll be in the community. And the more we get the message out and the more people actually come along and see what the standards actually are at this level, I think they'll be blown away. I know people that have come to the game and the comments after, you know, I don't know how you want to take them, but they're like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. It's a great standard. And I'm like, well, that's great to hear, but what was you expecting? These are these are female athletes who train on in their own time. They're not professionals. They give everything to two hours of training twice a week, and they take the game very, very seriously. And they've been in, involved in the game now since they were youngsters. So you've got to give them the credit they deserve. Maybe you weren't aware, but we have to raise that awareness. So we've got a big job to do, but we're going in the right direction, and we can only play our small part, really. You touched on um, the women's game in the US and it being really embedded uh, in there. And that's where you made your first steps into, into working with women and girls. And it wasn't something maybe that you perhaps considered doing initially, was it? No, I've got, I've got to be honest. I was somebody who needed educating in the game. I, I was guilty of being one of those that's always been involved in the men's game. Very comfortable working in the, in the men's game. Um, and also working with, with uh, males predominantly. So when I was given the opportunity to coach uh, a girls team in the States, I, I didn't want to do it. Um, I just felt, 
I just felt I was more suited to the men's game. That was just my personal thing. At the time, looking back, I think it was because it would have taken me out of my comfort zone and I wouldn't have liked that, that challenge of working with girls. I guess it was the unknown. Um, but a deal was struck where if I took um, uh, a team for the summer to do a summer camp, which is like a pre-season camp, they were only young. They were, I want to say, nine or ten years old. Um uh, I fell in love with them uh, and, and I just wanted to be involved with this team. And luckily, the managers at the time, because usually over there, the parents are the managers and then a professional coach comes in. So the managers uh, also like what I did with the girls. And from then, I just I kind of went through from under nines, tens with them all the way through to their under 16, 17, 18 year olds. So I went on that whole journey with them and loved every minute. I was educated. I learned as much from them as they did me. Um, and yeah, I've not looked back really on the women's game ever since. It's really good to hear that you've had a positive experience. So over 20 years now involved in coaching uh, girls and women, female athletes. So talk us through the maybe the psychological differences, the physical challenges, the things that you've you've learned and picked up through through all that time. Um. You know, in terms of coaching women versus the men, in my opinion, the the biggest difference sometimes is the the psychological differences with things. So uh, I learned a lot in the States and, and I worked along some great um, mentors, if you like, in the female game who educated me on, on a lot with that and, and how to get the best out of a female athlete. There's there, there's no difference whatsoever in, in they want to compete, they want to win. It's sometimes how you go about that. Um, friendships and relationships matter a lot um, on the women's side of the game. So you have to develop that and you have to work with that a little bit. Whereas on the men's, they don't always care about the relationship uh, on that side of it a little bit. So I think that's the biggest thing. And I've also found as a coach, the, the one thing that I've really admired and that I get a lot from is the time and effort you put in as a coach for the female athletes, you get that back tenfold. So if you're all about them and you're giving everything towards them, they will always give you it back on the pitch. Um, and in training, uh, you, you know, their commitment and desire to, to give everything to the cause is, is phenomenal. I've been in games where we've been losing 2-3-0. And sometimes on the men's side, depending on your team, you feel like that's the end of the game and you're just waiting for the time to come. On the women's side, you don't lose hope until the last second that the whistle goes because they will keep fighting and playing to the end as long as you're there with them. I think so. That's the reciprocal that you get back. Whereas in the men's, you can give everything, you don't always get it back sometimes. Um, and I think that's the biggest difference. And I think that's what drives you forward to do your best you can for the players and and so on. So yeah, I, I love working with the women. I love working. Uh, with the athletes at this top end of the game as well. Um, they challenge me as much as I challenge them, and that's what I want as a coach. Physiologically, uh, there are clear differences in terms of yeah. managing managing um, women. So what are, what are those things that you have to consider in getting the best out of them? So... So the two, two main things, and I'm no expert, it's just over my years um, of working in the women's game, and also um, uh, being made more, more aware and being more comfortable in researching and discussing the areas. The two, the two obvious ones that, that spring to mind that you'll see in the media is how does the menstrual cycle affect female athletes? Um, and there's studies done on female athletes in general and female athletes um, specifically to football. Um, and there's a number of things you can read on with that when they're on the cycle, more things to be aware of. Does it affect performance? If so, physiologically, what type of performance? There's research done on more the endurance side of that versus the running and jumping. Um, when they're in competition mode, so game day, um, it doesn't have, seem to have too much too much of an effect. So it depends where you're researching, but you certainly, regardless of the research, you do need to be aware of when this is. So they're not just coming to training sometimes and they're in a bad mood or they're underperforming. There's more reasons to it. And you do need to understand those physiological issues um, that go along with that as a male, because we wouldn't think anything of that, really. So you have to be more mindful of it. 
Um, I also am aware, obviously, of, of lower limb uh, injuries and ACL injuries with women. There's a lot of research in that. There's a lot of um, prevention programs with that. So as a coach, you try and build into your program exercises after the warm-up, during the warm-up, post-game. We've got to do more on that side of things to limit those those incidences, if you like. Because at the end of the day, yes, you've got a female athlete at the top of the game, but I think you have a duty of care that when these women are finished, you don't want them full of arthritis, lots of injuries, hobbling around. You know, the football career is so, so short and compared to the rest of their life that you need to look after them as best you can in your duty of care. So we need to find out how to reduce ACL injuries, do our best to do that and while still maintaining and improving their athletic performance. So it's something I constantly read upon. It's something that I, I do in my own time. It's, it's important. It's important to the players that I coach with um, and also to stay on top of players and, and letting them know that your door's always open and that, yes, you can be comfortable talking to me about this. At the end of the day, I live with five women. I have four daughters and a wife and I'm more than uh, familiar with um, females and um the cycles and, and how that impacts things and the mood and, and so on. So you can't hide away from it. You, you've got to be open to it for sure, I believe. I guess you got over your embarrassment fairly quickly as a young man to going into those sorts of discussions. and. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I learned the hard way as always sometimes. And sometimes they're the best way to learn because those things stick with you. But I do remember an incident when, Obviously, having the, the team that I had all the way through, you go through everything with them when they hit puberty, the cycle, everything you go through, really. It's like having your own child, but you give them back at the end of the, the sessions. And we were warming up. And I was fed up uh, of constantly saying to the players, we're starting warm up now. Um, please go to the bathroom. You know, you've got all this time. You shouldn't be needing to go when we warm up with 30 minutes to go to a game. And, and I'm all about discipline and, you know, and so on. So the players started warming up and all of a sudden a player just runs off and I catch her running off and I shout to her, what have I said about the bathroom? What are you doing? And she screamed back over a packed field because it was a tournament. I'm on my period. And I, after that, I just went, fine, do, do what you need to do. If you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom and come back and do your warm up. So, yeah, I learned the hard way. Um, we had a female member of staff who was one of the managers and looking back, she was um, she was a phenomenal member of staff, really. I didn't appreciate her as much at the time, but uh, she educated us a lot more. It's not just about football and your technical and tactical training. You, you do need to understand your players as people, first and foremost, before you even get into the football, really. 